and welcome to On the Page. I'm your host, Jen Mulvihill. We have another fantastic author on our episode today. Uh, you might know her from the Unwilling series. She is a paranormal, dystopian, romantic, erotic romance writer, Katie Wood. Katie, hey. how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I guess we don't have any storms today. Usually we're recording during storms. No, not not today, but we have dogs. That's about it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I don't hear them, but that's okay. If we did, that's, that's right. You, you don't have dogs, you have wogs, right? <laughs> yes, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of different ones now. Oh, you got some new goblins, huh? Yes. One wog, one goblin, and one baby. Aww. So, yeah. How cute. Awesome. Well, you know, I was wondering, I was reading some of your um, interviews prior, and it said that you don't like spiders. No. Oh, God. But I'm going to spill some tea here. You have been seen at some of these, these events where the infamous spider witch has been known to attend. What's up with that? That's true. The spider witch and I have a, an agreement. <laughs> so. And she doesn't stick her spiders on you, huh? True. Very true. Very true. She keeps her spiders. I mind my business. We go on about it. So. <laughs> um, so I also read some interesting information. I usually ask people what their um, favorite book was when they were a child. And yours is probably the same as mine. And But go ahead and tell me, what book was that? Binocula. Oh, wait. Oh, I, I okay. Explain this one because that's a little bit different than what I read in your other interviews. So I have a couple, but that's one that it sort of incorporates both parts of my life. So I am a registered dental hygienist uh -huh. since 1999. So you have the bunny rabbit who's a vampire. And so it's, oh. it's a children's book. It's really old. I, well, older than me anyway. So I don't know how, how when it was published, but um, it, it was one of my favorites as a kid. Um, my mom read it quite a bit until I could read. And then I read whatever I wanted to after that. But that, that's the one of, that sticks out for sure. What's the name of it again? Binocula. But not, oh, how cute is that? I'm going to have to look that up because I haven't heard that one. It's a, it's, it's a really weird, which I was a weird kid. So it was a really weird little vampire bunny book. Well, that's cute. Well, you said weird kid, but you know, like author. So yeah, <laughs> we have our moments, don't we? <laughs> it kind of goes with the territory, right? Yep. Um, and so you also read The Hobbit too. Uh, oh, yeah. So that was in high school. That was much further into my writing. I mean, my reading and writing or beginning to write. Uh, the Hobbit was actually the first experience where I had a book and it was a pretty good size book, you know. Oh, yeah. And as soon as we finished it, which I read ahead, you know, I was, I was in love with it. So I wasn't really waiting for my teacher to tell me what to read. And so I read ahead and I finished it. And it's the first book that I was like, I'm going to do that again. And I just immediately started over. And so I read it three times that year. Oh, um, wow. For the first one time. year. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I read it. Uh, I've read it a lot. I probably can't count how many times I've read it myself, but I'm glad to, to know I'm not the only one that has done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so yeah, that definitely. do you think that impressed on your writing that and and uh, and the not not wait say that again binocula binocula <laughs> and i may not even be saying it right it's been a really long time but yeah bunny bunny, bunny. yeah like dracula so you think these uh impressed your in your writing oh absolutely i mean he yeah. people can say what they want to about talking but he had so many things going on you know oh, yeah. wrote his own language he was suffering from a really bad version of ptsd from the war you know he had just so many different things going into these books, the way he was dealing with his own stuff and creating these worlds and names and characters and creatures. And, you know, I, I it just blew me away. It really did. And it still does to this day. Did you read uh, all of them? Not just The Hobbit, but the whole. Yeah. 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 Have you read any of the books? As I got older, you know, I didn't read the books quite as often as I did. not I spend a lot of time watching the movies, though. 
I spend uh-huh. a lot of time watching movies. They're, they're those movies that you go back to, you know exactly what's happening. You don't really have to watch it, but it's that really comfortable place in a story that you love. So I spend, I probably watch them once a week. Literally. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I love I love watching them. I probably haven't watched them that much because I got a lot going on. But yeah, they're they're very they were very well done. I agree. <laughs> my sister in law is in my Facebook live group, and she's a librarian, and she put on their binocular a rabbit tail published in 1979. <laughs> thank you. 1979. Okay. <laughs> that, well, thank you. So thank you yeah. for that. Now we have that information. Who's the author? Can she throw that out so we can all look it up? Heather, who's the author? She'll she'll get me the author in no time. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of librarians. <laughs> They're my favorite people. Yeah. So is that when you discovered, um, I guess, reading Tolkien or maybe before that words had power, that you could use like them as a superpower? Absolutely. In Absolutely. your writing. You know, it was a, it was probably the same way for you. It was a stage of, of getting into writing. You know, you, you read and you read and you read and you think, I'm still looking for that book. I'm still looking for that book. Mm-hmm. And so I looked and I read and I looked and I read and I never found it. So I wrote the one that I wanted to read. And that was oh, the very first book that I wrote. So romance, that that's how you got into writing romance was because you couldn't find what you wanted or... You know, romance is tricky. It really is. <laughs> romance is a tricky place to land because I never wanted to write romance. Not oh. really. You know, you you get into that headspace where romance, you know, when you're young and people talk about it and that kind of stuff. But then when you realize that's all you're writing, you might as well accept it because that's what you're writing and it's what you're reading. So get over yourself. You well, know. if you're good at it, then, you know. Yeah. Which you are. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I just had to get all that out of my head, you know, until I could really mm-hmm. fall into it and fall in love with it. Right. And, and you, you write dystopian and paranormal, but I have uh-huh. to ask, I mean, I, I know what it is, but a lot of people don't know what is new adult. New adult. So mm-hmm. most of the time, new adult is classed by age. So any character over I believe it's 17 or 18. It's been a while since they class, you know, since they put those numbers out there, but I'm, I'm going to say 18 for sure. So any character over 18 college age, mm-hmm. you know, getting into their life, not really moving into that buy a house, have kids stage yet. It's that in between space. That's a new adult. Okay. And it could be, it could be paranormal. It could be contemporary. It could be anything. It's that age bracket. Right. And for that classifies new adult. Because if I'm if I'm not mistaken, um, in your first book of the Unwilling series, she's is she not just getting out of high school or um, yeah, is it, okay, they're eighteen. They graduate high school at eighteen in that book. They sure do. Right. Okay. So that explains the age thing. So, all right. Cool. All right. So, um, so now you made me lost my track of what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You win your five bucks. <laughs> There's also the the heat level too. You know, in a they have a questionable heat level. Uh, I mean, young adult they have a questionable heat level, depending on what they're doing. You know, we all know that kids do wild and crazy things. So, yeah, I mean, you really can't say they're not doing it. But at the same time, when you're publishing, they want it in a certain box here and a certain box here. You know? So you can get you get a little bit more leeway with new adult when it comes to your steamier scenes. Uh-huh. that you wouldn't get with young adult. So how do you feel about being labeled like that? I never had a problem with it because mm-hmm. honestly, when I started writing, there was no new adult. There was no place for my book. And it was very discouraging not to have a place to stick this book on a shelf. Mm-hmm. It also led me to hundreds of rejections, so hundreds and hundreds of rejections because they would say, I like the way this book reads. I like the story. The characters are great. I don't know what to do with it, though. We don't have a spot for it. So I was very glad to see New Adult become a thing. Right. That was very refreshing for me. And it it kind of actually did become a thing about the time that you um, had your first book out. I was about two years behind the big rush of New Adult. That was like 2012. 
and okay. my book came out in 2014. So I was a little on the behind part of it, but couldn't be helped. It was just the way it was supposed to be. But it must be kind of hard to 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 write romance. To me, it is. You get really into um, emotions, a lot of emotions. I mean, it's not just about the the other things that they do, uh, but there's a lot of emotion in in uh, in these with these characters. Mm -hmm. And is it is there a time that was really hard for you to write something? Did you have a hard time? Is there a particular time that you had a hard scene to write? Or? Not as far as like dealing with emotion, because it's what I'll, I like to read that stuff. Mm -hmm. I want that first person dialed in so tight on that character. I want to know everything. Yeah. Um, it was really difficult for me to learn how to write third person for that reason that, you know, I, I wanted to know everything. And then I finally realized that third person could show you the outside of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So it brought another di dimension into the writing that I had not expected. Uh, right. So that was very pleasant uh, when I went through that transition of writing. But now I've never had a problem uh, writing difficult scenes. I tend to have more of a problem moving people along. Like I want to get stuck. <laughs> so I have the opposite problem that most people have. I love to write a, a hot scene. I love to write a sex scene. I love to write a really angsty scene, you know, really dig into it and get nasty with it. But it's never bothered me at all. I never had it. Oh, well, that's good. And you've got some beautiful covers too. Um, can oh, we see you. some of these covers? We've got some, we've got quite a few books out, but we've got some great covers. There we go. Yeah. Some, they pretty much tell you there's something going on there. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. They're, they're doing the work. That's for sure. <laughs> that is awesome. That's great. Do you get to pick your covers or? Uh, for the Unwilling series, I got really lucky with Laura Heritage at Blue Tulip. She did a great job, uh -huh. a really great job creating those covers. And I actually shot a actress in Memphis. She's the girl that's on that cover of those books. Oh, wow. Um, she's she's not in Memphis anymore, but yeah, she she was great and just fit the the character perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, and that cover actually won quite a few awards. Uh, Unwilling's cover did. So I was very proud of those books and I still am to this day. That's, and is there another Unwilling book coming? And no, that just... series ended with Unboundless. Um, okay. And, you know, I have like the typical little throwaway scenes that I post every once in a while. And there's tons of stuff on, on um, you know, the, the little free read things and, and all mm -hmm. that. But you no, know, it ended when the series ended, it, 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 it ended for sure. Well, you never know. You know, sometimes people like, you know, they say they end a book, but then it comes back. You never know. Oops. You never know. <laughs> for sure. I forgot to tell you this, maybe a prequel. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, but with the age group, you kind of have to be careful with that one, huh? <laughs> yeah. You're going to fall into some, some YA pretty quickly. <laughs> so what are you working on right now? Uh, right now, I'm working on Pain Mule, which is a dystopian romance. Uh -huh. And that book I pitched in New York uh, at Romance Writers uh, of America at the, the National Convention uh -huh. uh, two summers ago now. I pitched that book and I got a ton of really difficult submissions that I'm still working on trying to get that book out. Right. Um, it had to go through a couple of edits, you know, the typical uh -huh. stuff. And um, but I got, I got really lucky with a beautiful indie cover um, that I had made. So if, if that doesn't work out, it'll be an indie book. It, it has definitely two options for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope to have it done by the end of the year. If it, if it doesn't get picked up in New York, it'll definitely be out because it's pretty much finished. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you if you were part of the Romance Writers of America, and mm -hmm. I kind of figured that you were. Yeah, I've been a part of the organization for quite a while. I did uh, the local here in Memphis for several years, held office, you know, mm -hmm. several different offices all the way up to president. Uh, and that chapter doesn't exist anymore, but still part of the national the national mm -hmm. uh, convention for sure. That's yeah, I thought invited to one of the meetings one time. They're really, really great ladies. They're very positive. 
uh, a good energy about the group. I really appreciated it. The only thing was, is, um, I have just slight romance, but mine are so young adult that, you know, there's not enough of it in there for them to, <laughs> to be interested. So, yeah, you know, maybe I'll have to write something like that. Get a little more steamy. You know, maybe the spider witch needs a love interest. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never, never know. know. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, so you're working on that. Um, did the pandemic um, have, like, a lot of authors I talked to, they, they kind of were put on a standstill. I mean, not just because we couldn't go to book writings, but a lot of people, and I'm not going to call it writer's block, because that's not really a thing, I, I don't think. But yeah. I, a lot of people just kind of stopped, you know, and they didn't write for a while. Did you have any issues like that? Or are you just one of those that just, you just keep going? No, I didn't. I didn't really stop. Mm -hmm. um, it was just such a weird time because I got into a conference uh, that last Coast Con. Yeah, I was there. I went yeah. to was right before all of that hit, you know. So yeah. I was in that last convention sort of, thinking, okay, maybe this will blow over or whatever. And then it didn't and it got worse. And um, we were stuck here at home for about a month. Um, and and it, things went on. It was just a little difficult having two kids. Everybody needed a computer. Everybody's in school. So there was not a ton of focus time to write. Um, right. What I did write was very short, usually, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't spend a whole lot of time writing just because there were so many people in the house, you know, everybody was here and it, there was no good time to focus on what I was writing. I need a lot of quiet, really. I mean, I hate to say it, but I need, I need them to get out of my face. So that I can get something done. <laughs> Love my family, it's really hard. Well, that kind of leads me into my other question about your writing space. What kind of a writing space do you have? I have a couple. Um, I used to have just a, a bedroom that was my office. Uh -huh. But my boys were, sh were sharing a room at the time. And so they grew up and they couldn't really share a room. You know, so I got booted out and son moved in. And so I created a, a little office space in the corner of the garage, which oh, wow. works really well until the weather gets increment. It's either really cold or really hot. <laughs> so I can only write out there in the spring and the fall. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guessing that deep freeze didn't help any at all, huh? No, no. I mean, it's a great space. I love writing out there, but it's it's very temperamental, very temperamental indeed. So usually I'm in here with my earplugs stuck in my ears, on the couch, with my computer in my lap and yeah. doing the thing. And I see you have some books behind you. Do you have a, quite a few co collection of books there? Or? Yeah, these are just two shelves. The other shelves are across the rest of the house. So. What do you I think, think is the oldest book uh, that you have in your house? The oldest? The oldest. Oh, gosh. Probably. Um, I've got a couple of my kid books in here, you know. Oh, um, cool. From when I, I was a kid. Old, though, so. um, <laughs> a lot of old, you know, required reading from high school. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. All my collection of Hobbits. I have several of those. The collection yeah. of hot, yeah. Did you ever read any science fiction? Did you ever get into that? I did a little. Um, I hadn't spent a whole lot of time in science fiction. I spent a lot of time, like a big block of time, reading the genre genre that I was writing. So that's what most of these are. Right. Um, I spent several years going to book signings and meeting other new adult authors and young adult authors. And so I spent a ton of time in that genre, even though I, I didn't in, in high school or, or as a kid, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in that genre. I was kind of a weird reader just all over the place as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I got really focused on writing, I wanted to know what everybody else was writing, you know, to see if it would fit in and, and where I would stick that book on the shelf, which was one of the hardest things that I ever did writing was trying to find out where, where it needed to go. Where you need. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's, Hmm. That makes it um, difficult trying to figure out where you fit in there. But yeah, because <laughs> I never expected to be young adult. It just kind of happened that way. Because, again, I was writing when I had kids, little kids, 
Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I didn't use any uh, uh, obscene language or anything like that. And only just because that's not how I was thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and it just kind of came out young adult. Okay. I did have someone tell me once my, my books would never be in the schools because it has the word damn in it three times. I was like, Oh, <laughs> well, they're wrong. Cause they're in the school. So <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if you hadn't met a first grader that says, damn, I don't know where you would, because <laughs> I know mine did. Well, what kind of um, advice would you give somebody that wants to be a writer or is trying to write? Um, I would say, number one, I would say definitely write. Don't think about writing. Don't talk about writing. Don't hint, hey, I got an idea. Will you help me write it? Sit down and write. Go ahead and do it you know, stop playing around with it and saying you don't have time. You're not going to get any more time. You got the time that you got. And right. the second thing I would say, I burned myself up really quickly the first year and a half that I published because I put out three books in a row. I'm like, oh, wow. Boom, boom, boom. And like in October, November, September, October, November, like back to back. Mm -hmm. And it, I completely burned myself up, even though they were great books and they did, they were beautiful and I was proud of them. I, the process, when I say of publishing and getting those books ready and promoting those books and all those things just burned me up. And I sort of lost that joy that I had of writing. Oh. So I would definitely say, protect your joy, figure mm -hmm. out, in your life where you can fit certain things, you know, is your writing important to you? Okay. Put it over here. Do you need to promote? Okay. Put it over here and don't try to mix the two things because mm -hmm. they, they burn each other up, you know, or they did for me anyway. No, and I totally agree. You, you spend a lot of time uh, working in the promotion area and marketing area. And I think a lot of people don't realize um, oh, yeah. how much is involved in that. Yeah, it's brutal. I mean, promotion and trying to have not only the time, but the funds and the the place, oh, yeah. you know, trying to find a place to promote because it's not the same landscape that when we started, you could just put it up on Facebook and everybody would see it. Right. You do that anymore. You get, you're fighting that algorithm. You're fighting everything that's against you trying to promote that book that was so easy to promote in 2011 and 2012. You know? Yeah. It's very different. And you go to a lot of conventions and, and uh, yeah. book conventions um, beat the pavement. Like, like we all do. <laughs> yeah. There was a couple of years there that I did one a month in season, which would be con season. Right. You know, it usually starts February to August every month, sometimes once or twice a month. I was at a, a big con signing and that was exhausting. I saw a lot of people, met a lot of great people, sold a lot of books, but it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear you. When when I first got my books published, it was like that, too. It was like, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, someone, oh, you want to be here at this convention? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'll, I'll work it in somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just keep going. But you're right. You don't want to take the joy of writing out because that's yeah. that's the fun stuff. Yeah, and it's really important. Good. Yeah, have you ever cried while you're writing? Oh my like, god. <laughs> when have I not? <laughs> when have I not cried over something? Good lord. <laughs> Killing characters, tearing up pages, having to delete part, you know, delete stuff. Oh my god, all of it. All of it. Tears. <laughs> <laughs> but you get into your characters. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm fascinated by those people that don't hear voices in their head. Like, yeah, I don't understand you know, that. I, I never thought, heard that before. I thought that was a normal thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I was like, how do you write a book if nobody's talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> you got to listen. You got to listen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then there's the fanfic. <laughs> No, no, God. Um, so okay, I have a I have a very important question to ask you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set this question up though a little bit. 
you are uh, trapped in your house for a month or so. <laughs> There's a pandemic or a snowstorm or something. You have all the emergency things that you need, food, water, blah, blah, blah. But what are your three comfort things that you need or want to have? Hmm, I'm going to say coffee for sure okay. because that's life sustaining for others. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say probably movies um, because you got to take a break every once in a while, you know. And I have my favorite movies. I have my Lord of the Ring and I have my Harry Potter. That's the, the two that I go back to every once in a while. Um, and then I'd say my dog. You know, I'd love like to always have my dogs because even though they get on my nerves sometimes, even though they're, they're a lot of work, they are still part of this family. <laughs> so they're, they're a comfort. Them. Yes. And some of them can be protectors too. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Um, so you mentioned something about movies. Um, I've been watching an interesting show and I think you're probably watching it too right now. It, watching the shadow and bone. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you read the books? No, I did not. Oh. Well, I'm going to be getting them obviously, but, um, yeah. I just, I never, I never heard of them actually. So until, yeah, until I saw yeah. this coming up and I, I was having a bad day yesterday and I was like, I just sat down, I turned it on and I was like immersed into the story and that's some good writing. And that's, that's, yes. um, and I'm sure the books are way better because they always are. And Lee is fantastic. She's been, um, actually to Oxford to sign at least twice. Uh -huh. Yeah. Twice. She came once, um, with, uh, if you remember fierce reads, that's been kind of a long time ago. They used to do big tours and there was multiple authors and oh, she did that yeah. one, you know, at the Square Books uh, yeah. in Oxford. And mm -hmm. then she came back when that last book came out uh, last two years ago now, maybe a little bit over a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And she's always just fantastic. And they did a really fantastic job on that show. They really did. Well, it's good to know that the shows are really good. I mean, as comparable to the books because there's yeah. a lot of shows out there that are not. Mm hmm. But speaking of really good books, where can we find yours? Uh, right now, <laughs> they are on Amazon. Uh, and the hardbacks, actually, probably the only hardbacks that are available right now are right behind me. Oh, okay. Uh, my publisher actually is closing its doors May 1st. So these oh. books will have to be re um, given new life. Uh huh as self-published books. So they will look a little bit different probably, but it'll be the same story and they're, they're available in audio still that won't come down because I, I own those, but uh, yeah, my publisher has decided to close its doors, but they'll still be coming back. We'll have big things planned for them and they'll be available again pretty soon on all the retailers. Well, that's fantastic. We're, we're glad that they're still going to be around um, to get, and you will probably be posting when you're going to be around as soon as we can be let out. Yeah. But until then, uh, we are, we have run out of time. We've had so much fun. I just want to thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. And, and well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, everybody keep reading, keep writing, and we will save the world one story at a time <laughs> on the page. Thanks, Thanks Jan. You.